How'd you like to make friends with a very unusual rabbit? How do you do? Meet a crazy fox or a bungling bear. Introducing Uncle Remus, Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear in the happiest, slappiest, dashingest, flashingest, singingest, flingingest Disney animated classic of all. This holiday season, Walt Disney's Song of the South is back on the big screen. Rated G. Now playing at a theater near you. Song of the South was released November 12, 1946. The film was based on the tales of Uncle Remus by Joel Chandler Harris. It involves the use of both live action, film, and animation, even at some points bringing them together for a truly mesmerizing experience. Now, I could tell you all about the film and its plot, but the documentary in the description below explains it perfectly. I'm really here to prevent the historical significance of the film from being overshadowed and explain why we should be allowed to see it. At the time that Song of the South was released, it was common for the Walt Disney Company to use pre-written early material in their films. This film was no different. Song of the South is based off of the Joel Chandler Harris Uncle Remus stories. Joel wasn't the first person to come up with the Bear Rabbit characters, nor the first to publish them. The stories of Br'er Rabbit stem from the slavery era in America, told by African American slaves and former slaves during the slavery and reconstruction eras in the South. Each story featured the Br'er Rabbit character using his wits to escape the clutches of Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Wolf. It's been assumed that the stories represented a slave escaping their master using wits instead of fighting because they seem much weaker and smaller. The first time that the Br'er characters would make their major headlines would be when cousin of Theodore Roosevelt, Robert Roosevelt of Sable, New York, would publish them in Harper's Weekly in 1881. One of the most popular media sources of that era was Harper's Weekly. It has been noted that Robert grew up on a plantation in the early 1800s. This is where he heard these stories. The stories rocked the world and became very popular in the United States. Eventually, Joel Chandler Harris, living on a plantation around the same time period as a child, created the Uncle Remus character, representing the many different African American people who shared these stories around the world. Uncle Remus was given the name to feel more closely related to the reader in the 1800s when it was published. Each story was very similar, but displayed different ways the rabbit would utilize reverse psychology on the antagonist. Walt Disney claimed that Joel was one of his favorite authors of all time for sharing something that was truly historical in a beautiful bright light. Walt wanted to make the movie to share the same feeling. While it also being a Disney movie, the true background of these stories was completely missed in the plot. Although the film featured many opportunities for African American people in the 1940s, it was immediately criticized by the NAACP. Although, they praised the film upon its initial release. They stated that the film painted a dangerous picture of what slavery looked like at the time. The film, however, takes place during the Reconstruction era. Even so, it was meant to be lighthearted, for it is a Disney movie after all. The movie was meant to bring unity and not truly focus on the horrible origins of these stories. The film features the main character, Uncle Remus, a black man, and a white child, Johnny, holding hands, symbolizing true family between them because his father wasn't there for him as much as Uncle Remus was. Uncle Remus was played by the lovable James Basket, who had been familiar with the Disney company since 1940, playing the fat crow in Dumbo. 
He had only auditioned for a small butterfly character. And because Walt loved his audition so much, he came out with not only the butterfly character, but Br'er Fox and the leading male character, Uncle Remus. This was truly historical for the time period, in which a black man was the leading role of the film. Not only that, but he was the first African American man to receive an Oscar for his performance of Uncle Remus in the famous Zippity Doodah sequence of the film. Not to mention Hedy McDaniel, the first African American to win an Oscar from her performance in Gone with the Wind, was also in the film, singing an up-tempo ballad called Sooner or Later. Many other African Americans were on the film set, singing spiritual inspired pieces written by the Walt Disney Company. On the animation side of things, the Br'er Rabbit character was voiced by Johnny Lee, an African American man who had worked with Basket on the Amos and Andy show previously. Br'er Bear being played by the timeless Nick Stewart, one of the first African American men to be added to the National Film Registry, who also had worked on the Amos and Andy show, playing one of the most popular characters on the show. The show was shut down by the NAACP for the use of blackface. While being justified, they were taking away job opportunities from these wonderful actors. Due to that show being canceled and Song of the South being widely criticized, Basket's health started to decline. Although possibly unrelated, this man had changed the stigma of having black people in film and was being forgotten. Although, the film did quite successfully. James Basket passed away two years after the film's release. This was due to diabetes heart complications at the time. But in the words of Nick Stewart, James Basket died from a broken heart. These men set new standards for the television and film registries for years and years to come. Centering and removing the film from the public eye is not the best option, obviously. By doing so, we forget the history it holds and the work that went into it. Next time you hear those familiar lyrics to zippity doo da remember how important it is not to only American history, but African-American history.